guys and back with another video so today's video is going to be yet again another story time as you guys can see the background is different i am at home if you don't know i got into like a really bad car accident so i'm just home taking a week off from school just resting and recuperating so i will be back to school very soon but for right now i'm home one last thing do not pay any attention to this devil on my face i'm not sure how it got on my face um i haven't even worn makeup in like the past week or so so it's just i don't know why it's on here but hey let's just get right into this story time so this story is going to be all about the time where this lady gave me a very very bad frontal installation and the entire thing was just a freaking nightmare right now i have in a frontal that i did myself um this is the part I don't have my sides down because I just didn't want to put so much tension on my edges. But this is a frontal. And this is about like, honestly, this is like two bundles of hair. It's actually three, but the amount of hair they gave me, it equals two. So it's like two bundles and a frontal. So last month was October and it was homecoming. And I really wanted my hair to be like really popping for homecoming. I wanted to be like really cute. Um, so I had this leftover hair from the summer. It was four bundles of like this deep curly hair and a frontal so I was just like you know what once I get back to school in Toledo maybe for homecoming I can use this hair because it was just hair left over so it was like two 30 inch bundles a 28 inch and a 26 inch and then like a 20 inch frontal the bad part was that the frontal was like afro kinky curly and the bundles were like deep waves so the bundles and the hair didn't even match to begin with so I was like you know what I want to get my hair done and I want to look very very cute for homecoming and I want to have a frontal I want to be slayed I want it to look really 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 nice so ignore me touching my hair I just like this straight hair it's my first time with straight hair y'all so my roommate L'Oreal the person that does her hair is um someone that's in Detroit the person does the hair and has specials in which they charge $75 for closure sew-ins full closure sew-ins and also frontal installations with a sew-in so $75 for a frontal is like yes 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 like that is really good news and if you go on the Instagram page the person that does the hair the frontals are laid the closures are slayed everything looking good you know I'm just like yes I'm really impressed and I'm like okay good so we made our appointment two weeks before homecoming and we said we were going to drive up to Detroit from Toledo to get our hair laid and slayed she just wanted some curls in her hair and I wanted my full frontal installation with the sew-in mind you I am so used to wearing wigs I have not gotten a full sew-in since high school like literally the last time I had my hair sewed in track by track was probably high school I really wanted to get a sew-in just because you know it was something I haven't had in a while I was so used to wearing wigs and I really wanted a frontal because it was have been like my first time having a laid and slayed frontal I had tried a frontal one time before but it wasn't all that we were supposed to get our hair done that Wednesday and then that Saturday was homecoming Friday I had an event and Thursday we also had an event so I, I had to get my hair done that Wednesday I'm in class with my hair just not done it was just in a natural state I had washed it blow dried it and put it into a bun like I always do and I'm just you know ready to get this frontal slay because I'm like oh my goodness I'm gonna look so bomb when I come back everyone's gonna be asking about my hair the next day you know who did it all that stuff that you know when we get our hair done as girls everyone's like okay who did it they did a nice job all that stuff so I'm sitting in class my class ends around three I get a message from L'Oreal at like 2.50. She said our hair appointment was canceled and that the person couldn't do our hair anymore because their mom was in the hospital. So I'm just like, what am I supposed to do? I have this frontal laying around. I thought I was going to get my hair laid and slave for $75. And now I have to go to like a plan B. So I went for plan B. I called up um, a very nice lady. I'm going to be working with her in the future when it comes to like YouTube hair and stuff like that. And she was just like, okay, I'll do it. You know, just let me know when you want your hair to be done. You know, you have to book me. So I, I wanted to wait for L'Oreal to come back from work to see if she wanted to actually get her hair done by her. Because, you know, you always want to have your certain stylist that you get your hair done. It's just weird to cheat on your stylist. You go to someone who always does your hair. And for you to go to someone else to get your hair done is like really, really risky. So I wanted to wait for her to come back from work. Look at the Instagram pictures look at all of that and see if this is what she wanted to do so I waited and then I was just like you know what I'm gonna just tell her that I'm gonna get it done because if L'Oreal doesn't want to do it then of course I would want to do it and she was also offering me the $75 even though she usually charges more than that she was just being a very nice lady she was just like I understand your circumstances you know you have a big event I'll charge you the same price so 8 o'clock p.m. rolls around on like Wednesday and I'm just like okay I'll just text her and say 
hey, I want it. So she calls me back and she's just like, oh, sorry, I can't do your hair because someone booked me via Style Seat and my Style Seat customers get priority over people that just, you know, say they want me to do their hair. So I'm like, oh my goodness, like this is just so irritating like everything was going wrong I'm like I don't have any other person I don't know anybody out here in like the Midwest Ohio Michigan I don't know anybody out here so I was just like what am I going to do now so she was just like um I'm so sorry but I can refer you to someone in Toledo that knows how to do it I don't know if anyone's watching me from Toledo you can leave down in the comment section where you guys get your hair done I'm not talking about a wash press and curl blow dry no I'm talking about actual sew-ins full sew-ins with closures frontals, whatever it may be. I don't know anybody out here in Toledo that's doing good hair, like go doing celebrity status hair. Like I know people that can do wash, press, curl, blow dry, stuff like that. Like I could do that to myself, but I'm just saying I don't know anybody out here. I was very, very hesitant. She was like, you know, I know that she can do it. I've seen her do it, blah, blah, blah. Here's her number. You can text her and see what's going to happen. I text her and I'm just like, hey, I'm sorry. I know this is very last minute, but I I'm in college, I go to UT, it's our homecoming, I have a lot of events that I'm involved in, especially the football game, can you help me with my hair? I need to get a frontal, I was supposed to pay $75, a frontal with a sew-in, can you help me? She was just like, oh yeah, um, I can do it. She said it cost $175 to get a frontal installation with a sew-in. I'm like, okay, no, I don't have $175, I only budgeted $75 for my hair. So she was just like, okay, well... Um, that's just how much I charge. We can do it tomorrow morning before you go to class. My classes started like 1230 every day, so my mornings are free. Desperately, I need someone to do my hair. So I said, how about this? How about I just want you to customize my frontal, install my frontal, you know, just give me a frontal install. The rest, I can sew in my hair by myself. Just do my frontal for me, lay it down, slay it down whatever. So she's like, okay, it's going to cost half price. So 175 divided by half is $87.50. First of all, that's just a stupid total because why would anyone pay $87.50 for something? You could have at least just said, you know what, 85, 80, something, you know, or just giving me what I was going to pay for because $10 Fluctuating $10 from $75 to $87.50, like that's around roughly $10, $12. It's no big deals. But Nonetheless, it's your service, your credentials, not my problem. Okay. So I'm just like, okay, you know what? I can go and get the extra money. I just need my hair done. I saw the pictures. I said, okay, this is good. I was told about you as to, you know, you could do the hair for me. So I might as well just go and check it out and see if, you know, see if everything's okay. I searched up her salon. I searched up the Facebook. I went through the pictures religiously, just making sure this is what it was. You can tell a lot about a woman by looking at her hair and the way how she wears her hair and the way how she upkeeps it. And to women, our hair is like our everything. Like our hair is just our identity. So the next morning I show up to her shop and I'm sitting in her chair. She's not really like talking to me. She's not really making conversation with me. She's not asking me my like goals, what major I'm in. She's not really talking to me at all. She's literally sitting there putting my frontal onto like a wig cap and she's like, oh, have you ever seen anyone do it this way? And she basically sewed the frontal onto like a, um, like a stocking cap. And I guess it was supposed to go on my head that way. And then she was going to put it on whichever way that she does it. I was just like, I don't know, you know, I've never seen anything. But, you know, I'm up to anything. I'm not the one with the hair license or the beauty license. You are. So you do your thing. You just make me look pretty at the end of the day. So I'm still sitting there, you know, I'm on the phone. I'm texting. You know, just sitting there for like a while while she sews the frontal onto the wig cap. And then I guess she cut the lace of the frontal off. She didn't hold it up to my hairline and customize it via my hairline. She just cut it in whichever way that it was kind of on there. So I'm not saying that was a bad thing, but I'm not saying it was a good thing either. I'm still sitting there and she starts to braid my hair. So usually when you see a frontal sew-in, you see the braid pattern is usually the straight cornrows back. And it's like 10 of them, 8 to 10 of them. It's like a lot of cornrows back, probably even more than that. And they're just going straight back. And underneath my frontal right now, my cornrows are just going straight back. Like on some Meek Mill braids. That's how it's supposed to look, just a nicer version. Like, it needs to look like Allen Iverson or freaking just cute, you know what I'm saying? So, she gives me four big dookie braids going straight back, like just straight four big braids. And then she sewed the back of the braids so that, you know, it can be flat in the back and it won't be like bulky because that's the end of the braids. Um, right there, I guess is red flag number one because I'm just like, hold on, hold on ma'am. 
for big braids but at the same time i'm like okay you're the one with the license you're the one with the you're the beautician or whatever this is your salon this is your shop maybe this is how you do it hey i'm up for it okay she then starts to put the frontal on but she didn't tweeze or anything she didn't customize it to my hairline she put the frontal over like this like over my head she lines it up she sees okay it looks good she didn't really manipulate it after that so then she took it off and she decides to start putting tape around my hairline i really wasn't opposed to the tape that much because like i said this was not me who has the license or on top of that i've never had a frontal installed by another person so i was just like if this is how she does it you know i'm not opposed to it it was my first time using a tape i didn't know like if tape was good bad i have seen it on youtube but it never really seemed like it did any harm so i was just like okay just she could go ahead use the tape it's all good. So she starts putting on the tape. And you know, when you put on the tape, you have to put it down to your forehead. She didn't put on my hairline. You put it down to the forehead, you take off the uh, extra wrapping, and it's tacky and sticky right there. So she does that all around my hairline. And then she puts the frontal back over to lay down the front of my frontal. She literally had to go back and add more tape, add like double doses of tape because the tape was just not working. I don't know if it's because the elasticity from the stocking cap was pulling the frontal back even though it's supposed to be going forward and it just wasn't sticking to the tape. I don't know if the tape was just like terrible. Like I just don't understand what was going on, but it just was not working. So I'm sitting there and she was just like, oh, um, I need to go buy some glue. I don't have any glue. So um, just wait right here. I'll be right back. So I'm sitting in her shop. She locks the shop up. I'm sitting in her shop with tape on my forehead. Literally just sitting there for about 15 minutes. Which is a long time when you're sitting there by yourself. In a place that you don't know. I, I don't know what to do. So I just sat there. Um, and I just waited for her to come back. So she comes back like 15 minutes later. And she starts using that clear glue. Like that 30 second glue that people always used to use. Like. The really, really strong one that smells really bad, like really strong smell. And it's like extremely, extremely like elastic, like real sticky. She starts using that around my hairline. I didn't say anything because I was just like, okay, you really need to get your hair done. You've gone to like three different people. You just have to get this hair done. And if this is how she does it and it doesn't hurt, you know, I've never had glue before, it can't be that bad. But she was still manipulating it, like, for whatever reason, it just wouldn't lay down, but she finally got it. Then she says, go look at it. So I look at it in the mirror, I'm like, okay, you know, it's down, because you parted for me. And then she also asked me, did I want baby hairs? And I'm just like, what type of question is that? Who doesn't want baby hairs on their frontal? You want your stuff to be laid and slayed. Like, why wouldn't I want baby hairs? So she puts, like, little baby hairs down for me, and I asked her to part it. So she side parts my hair, but she doesn't part my hair. This right here, this is a part. This is how you part hair. You know, you pluck it, tweeze it, whatever, and you part it down. What she pretty much did was she laid my hair over to the side, and she just kind of, like, pushed it back. Like, it was just like a lay it down there was no tweezing of the part no customization nothing so i looked and she was like do you want it like this and i was just like yeah that's how i want it she was just like okay at first i didn't say anything because i was just like okay um because you make my hairline look a little bit more reali realistic you know tweeze it plug it whatever because it was laid it was down the baby hairs i'll give her that she did a good job with that and the parting i'm like okay maybe she just really does not know what she's doing i could just do the parting myself it's no big deal she did her job in terms of putting the baby hairs down and adhering the frontal to my head i then was just like okay could you customize it you know tweeze it make my hair like look less bulky i guess she like touched up the ponytail that she did because mind you i still have braids in the back and I was going to sew the hair on too. So she says, oh, I should have told you that I don't customize or tweeze or anything like that. That comes with the full service. And since you're only getting a partial service, which is just me putting down the frontal, all I can do is put the frontal down and adhere it. Um, I'm not going to customize it or do anything fancy like that. Bitch, what? I would have never came to her if I would have known that beforehand. If you would have told me, oh, I don't do this, that, and the third, and I want this, that, and the third, and the fourth, I would have never wasted my time coming there, driving to the place, 
you know, wasting my time because I was there for a very long time. I missed class that entire day because I did not come back. Mind you, my appointment was at like 9 in the morning. We probably started at like 9.30, you know, around that. And I didn't leave there until it was about noon. Probably might be even later than that. It was way, yeah, it was past noon by the time I left out. So I'm sitting here like, are you stuck on stupid or are you stuck on dumb? Because what do you mean you don't do this, that, and the third? Like, you don't tweeze a frontal? Is that not part of it? You can't just put the frontal on. Like, what did Nicki Minaj say? Nicki Minaj said, you, you can't, can't give it to him dry, dry like, like that. that. You, you gotta, gotta get, get that shit, that shit wet. First, nigga, wet. Like, come on now. You can't give me my frontal just dry like that. You have to get it wet first. You have to tweeze it. You have to cut it according to my own natural hairline. You need to put it down in a way that it's going to be comfortable for me. You need to part it you have to make it look natural a frontal is made so that it can be looking natural not looking like a wig on your head you don't want it to be looking wiggy, wiggy, wiggy. i was just like you know what Chama? i'm just so like upset she did what she told like she did what i guess under her guidelines she was supposed to do at the time like i didn't have the money just because i didn't have the money but now like 80 dollars is nothing to me so i was just like you know what she can have her 80 I will go home, I will, I will see if there's something I could do. If not, you know what, I'll just tell her I don't like it, take it out, refund. So I go home, there was nothing, you know, I didn't do anything. It was a, what, Thursday? I had a talent show to go to, homecoming talent show to go to. I didn't touch the hair at all. I'm walking to the talent show and I'm over here trying to take cute little pictures and whatnot and I realize my frontal is sliding back already. What are we, a couple hours out the shop? There's no reason for the front to be sliding back. So I was just like, this is not like acceptable like at all. So I texted her and I said, Hey, I'm back home and my hair is done, but I have to say I'm not overall happy or impressed with my frontal. I had to tweeze it on my own and the glue is kind of starting to lift already and I haven't washed or pulled on it. Don't know what you can do, but I would really like some of my money back. I know everything was last minute and I appreciate that, but I'm going to be in the public eye tonight, tomorrow, and all of Saturday and I just don't feel like my hair looks as good as it should. That's basically me saying, yes, when I came home, I did try to make my part all i did was tweeze the parting i didn't touch the hairline at all i tweezed the parting that's what you can see from the picture i just put the parts in my hair because there was nothing she didn't tweeze it there was no concealer added to make it look natural no nothing because obviously my frontal wasn't bleached or anything so i put the concealer to make it look like my scalp color and i tweezed it and that's all i did she then replies hey honey i'm sorry i should have told you that if you don't have a full service done i don't tweeze i usually tweeze before i install the unit only when doing a full service when asked to do a partial service everything that's included with the full service costs extra the tweezing may be the reason for the slight lift also, before I let my clients out of my chair, I pull on it around all the perimeter, as I did to you, and there was no lifting. I've never had any problems with lifting of frontals I've ever done. However, I have never done a partial service either. The only thing I can do is offer to fix it. This is why I don't like doing partial services. Okay, because no. No. My thing is, you're basically saying that I would have to pay extra for doing what you're supposed to do for a frontal. It's a frontal sewing so half of it is you customizing doing the frontal and the other half is you doing the sewing i didn't ask for the sewing so you need to do everything that you need to do for the frontal you know what i'm saying does that make sense could you please comment down below if that makes sense to you because it makes sense to me it's just common sense and then the whole thing about the full and partial service to me why would i pay you extra to manipulate the frontal i should have been paying one third of the entire price of that 175 for you to even put the frontal on and then I would pay extra for you to tweeze if that makes sense. But I'm not going to pay for you to do the frontal and then pay XYZ amount of dollars for you to do the tweezing. That's supposed to be coming with the frontal. I said, okay, so since that wasn't specified, what can we do? Because had I known that, I would have just tried to keep looking for someone to do my hair. Like overall, I just don't like it. She then says, nothing but fix it as I already said. And if it looks like your dissatisfaction was not caused by me, you would have to pay extra for me to fix it. That's not my fault that you don't like it now, in all capital letters. I asked you before you left to check it out and let me know if you liked it and if you were straight with everything I did. You did that, said that you liked it, and asked me to just put a part in it for you. Never said that I liked it, I just said, okay. I said, yep, that's what I wanted you to do, part it, do this. I told her to add 
the baby hairs and to make my hairline look less bulky and I guess she didn't hear me or whatever. She said, so whatever you did after you left me is the reason why you don't like it overall because I didn't have anything to do with the overall finish. An installation like that needs to be done by the same person. Now you can come tomorrow if you like and show me the overall finish you don't like. Then we can see where we could go from there. So at this point I'm offended because basically what you're saying is me going and sewing in my what? Three bundles of hair is the reason why I don't like it. My hair was fine. My sewing installation was fine. I actually made a half wig with those bundles and it just attached to wherever she stopped the frontal. I just put the little wig piece just like I have it now. It's the frontal and there's a wig piece right here and I just put that on. I did not touch the frontal. It had nothing to do with that. It was about the frontal. The next morning I sent her the pictures of what it looked like when I woke up. So the next morning I said, it's not that I'm not satisfied with what I did. I'm not satisfied with what you did. I just don't like the way how the frontal lays and I just don't feel like it looks natural. The glue or tape is showing and there is a white residue around my hairline. I'm a college student and I spent over my budget last minute to get my hair done and now I feel like I wasted my money. If there's nothing you can do to at least partially compensate me for my dislike, then thank you for your services. And my Shawnee voice from basketball wives. Thank you for your services. Thank you for your services. Thank you. I sent her two pictures of what exactly it was and you could see the tape from my hairline. Even if my frontal was put down the way how it should have been, you could still see from the lace underneath the transparency, you can still see the white residue of the tape. So she could have missed me with the whole, it's what I did, the frontal is sliding back, that's why you can see the tape. I shouldn't have to see anything. If tape is clear, why am I seeing something white? White and clear are two different things, you know what I mean? So I then said, where my finger is, that is where my lace is, and the glue or tape is in front of that. I'm not going to have you redo anything at this point because of time, and it wouldn't make sense going back to be potentially not satisfied again. Of course, it was good when I left the shop because it was fresh and it was laid down. But I left, came home, didn't even put my unit on for a couple hours, and already started sliding back. And this morning, it's worse. I mean, if $80 mean more to you, then somehow satisfying your client then that's an issue you don't have to give me a full refund but at least something is better than nothing which to me is fair yes you did wake up and you did come in when you weren't supposed to so like I said you know it's only right that maybe you give me like $30 back and you could keep the other 50 but it's just like you know you did wake up you did come in it was last minute you did do some of the service you should be compensated. I'm not asking you for a full refund, but at least give me something. Something's better than nothing. You can give me 40. You can give me 50. You can give me 30. You don't have to give me all 80, but give me something. She then decides to come up with the insults. See, this is what I don't understand. Where does your professionalism lie? A lot of you girls that do makeup, hair, whatever it may be, nails for people, whether you have a license or whether it's just something that you do as a hobby, where does your professionalism lie? You need to be the bigger person in every situation and when you're dealing with a client. Because where does your professionalism lie? Because little does this lady know that I have this YouTube channel with damn near 20,000 subscribers. I'm not saying I'm going to cause her to not get business ever again. But me posting this, this can seriously just be like a, oh, I'm not going to her shop. Or let me look out for people. You know what I'm saying? You don't know who you're dealing with. So being nice and having professionalism is probably the best thing that you can do. But here she goes with the insults. She says... LOL. $80 means nothing to me. I make three times that amount on one head and I do at least five to ten heads in a day. So that's nothing. I mean, I don't know what you're trying to say because if I really wanted to with the business degree that I'm going to obtain, not want to attain, not I may attain, not potentially attain, that I'm going to obtain, I could buy this whole store and I'll turn it into Chama's hair shop and I'll show people what real professionalism looks like. So the insults, I didn't understand why she tried to go with the insults. All I'm saying is if money means more to you than satisfying your clients, which is like literally a moral thing, then that's an issue. And that's all I told her. Like, I don't know if I was insulting, but to me, if money means more to you than satisfying your clients, that's a problem. And she said, well, I make this, I make that, I do, I don't give a fuck. We're talking about my head. She continues, but as far as satisfying my clients, I have no problem with doing that. I've just never had a problem with my clients' frontal sewings. I usually do the full service myself, too. This has never happened. These pictures you sent look like those areas have been tweezed a lot because it didn't look like that. That's why you're having the problem. I said you can come in and get it fixed. I know you may feel you won't be satisfied, but I know my work and I've never had a dissatisfied client. I don't know what happened, but all I can offer you is coming in and letting me evaluate it and fixing the problem that you made. 
that's all. I mean, at this point, my blood is like raging. My blood pressure is going up because basically what you're trying to say is it is all my fault. I don't have a problem with anything but the fact that my frontal is sliding way back to 1992 and there is a white residue of the tape that you use on my forehead. Who is at fault here? This is obviously the tape in the pictures. And that's the tape that you decided to use. I thought I was getting my frontal sewn down. That's what the first person was going to do. That's what the second person is going to do. So the fact that you came in here with tape and glue or whatever, that should have been specified before I even walked into your shop. The reason why I wasn't really hesitant or I didn't really say anything, I'm just like, I just need my hair done and maybe this is the way how she does it. Maybe it's going to look good. If these are the pictures that I saw and this is how she did it, then fine. Just from the way how you advertise yourself, if this is how you did it, then I want mine to be done like whatever I saw. I said, so if money isn't the issue, why can't I just be refunded? I don't want to have this hair in anymore. I've already purchased hair that will be going in later. The section was tweezed, very seldomly tweezed, and I didn't touch my hair until late last night after I texted you about the issue. The tape is showing, the glue is not holding, and I'm ready to just be done with this style. I would want for you to see where I'm coming from because this issue was not caused by me. I wouldn't lie for $80. I'm not trying to be difficult, but seriously, this wasn't my fault. I just want this frontal off of my head and my hard-earned money back. I'm just going to continue. She then says, because I'm not the cause of the issue with your unit. I don't know what you did after you left me. Before you left, you confirmed everything was good. It was holding just fine when you left me. I pulled on it to check for lifting and there was none. And you confirmed that also. Just like you work hard for your money, I do too. And I just don't give my hard earned money back unless I know for a fact it was my fault. Next time you get a frontal sewing, make sure the stylist do the whole service so you'll know who for sure, so you'll know for sure the sir, so you'll know for sure it's their fault. Sorry y'all. It's their fault because they will have done everything and you won't have this problem because I don't know if you're trying to get one over on me or not. I don't know what happened when whatever was done after I did what I did. All I know is that you left satisfied. I never let a client pay me before they tell me they're satisfied with what I've done. I was satisfied with what my hair looked like when I left. If I come back a couple hours later and my frontal is sliding back and you're the one that did my frontal, why would I blame myself? I didn't touch it. I put a part in it, the part that you created. I put the concealer in the part and I tweezed the part and I went about my day. The next morning I wake up and now all of a sudden my frontal is all the way back in 1995. It doesn't make any sense. I wasn't even born in 1995. I wasn't even alive in 1995. So that's how sad how far back my frontal was. I said, again, the problem started happening as soon as I got back. Probably an hour and a half after I left you. At that time, I hadn't even touched my hair. Glue and tape doesn't hold as strong as a sewn-in frontal would have. So it makes sense that there was an issue. I actually thought I was getting my frontal sewn and upon entry to the service. But when you started using the tape, there was still no issue because I had never used tape with the frontal reclosure and I was open to it. But when you couldn't get the tape to have the frontal lay because I noticed you were struggling, that's why you decided to use the glue. Because she honestly was struggling. That tape was not doing anything. Which I was strongly against, but at the same time, time I was desperate to get my hair done. Glue can be washed out, sweated out, and it's obviously not the strongest adhesive and adhering or installing a frontal. It's not like I'm ignorant to anything that was going on. I've been interested in studying hair since I was 12 years old and I'm only 19. I did my research and I'm hip. If you have any sympathy, my PayPal is, and I gave her my email address to my PayPal, but if you insist, then thank you for your services. I will not be a returning customer because I was not satisfied with your work and I don't feel like you have sympathy for my situation. You have to realize that you failed to tell me key parts about the installation, about what was actually going to be done. I was expecting a frontal install, tweezed, parted, customized, sewn down, and all of that. You never told me that I was just getting it put on and a little bit of baby hairs and that should have been specified as well. Because trust me, I wouldn't have been a customer, not when I'm a college student who only budgeted to spend $75 on her hair. But thank you and God bless you. She then decides to call me. She calls me and she's like, you know, what were you talking about? Me struggling to put the frontal down. And I was just like, yeah, it wasn't going down. You were really pushing. Like she was literally pushing my frontal like this. You know what I'm saying? To have it laid down to the tape. But let me not look wiggy. But it just wasn't happening, which is why she went and got the glue. So then she says, oh, I got that tape from New York. You know, that tape, it was not a good tape. That's why I had to go and get the glue. The tape was not good at all. It was not holding. Can someone please tell me, do I have idiot written on my forehead? Do I have buffoon written on my forehead? Do I have dumbass written on my forearm? Is there something that says, I'm stupid on my t-shirt? No! 
So what do you mean that the tape was not working? And she tried to say that it was her first time using the tape and the tape wasn't good. Why am I your guinea pig? Why am I your crash dummy? Why am I your test dummy? Why are you using me to test out something that you don't even know if it's going to work? And you know that I have a big event to go to. You know what I'm saying? To me, that's just terrible. Like, that was such a terrible excuse. And I think at that moment, she realized from those pictures I was sending her that the tape that was showing through my lace frontal was because of the tape that she used. And New York people be scamming all the time. New York people scam all the time. Like, I'm not talking about, like, just ba their bag. I'm just saying, you know, if you buy something off the streets in New York, it's a 50-50 chance if it's really going to be whatever they said it was going to be. Like, come on now. Come on now. Like, why am, I your, why am I your dummy to try out this new tape? Like, to me, that was you admitting you did wrong. Because my issue was the fact that it wasn't laying down. And on top of that, the tape was showing in my frontal. So she was just like, you know what? You know, you could come and I can see what that is. Because I'm just like, at this point, I need her to see exactly what is going on. It's now Friday. You know, I had to handle some business like 45 minutes away from Toledo and like Finley area and I had to take care of some stuff and I was just like, okay, you know what, I'll come and I'll show you um, what it is, but I'm out of town, but um, when I get back, I'll come and show you. So she's like, okay, just call me when you're on your way back or when you're close. So as I'm nearing Toledo, I'm actually pushing it on the road because I'm trying to get back in because I had other things to do to prepare for homecoming. So I told her I'm pulling up. I will be there very soon uh, within the next 10 minutes. She was just like, huh? I thought you were out of town. Thought you were coming tomorrow. I'm on my way to a funeral. I said, I was in Finley. I rushed back and I was almost back. I'm taking it out as soon as I get home and putting something else in. I've sent pictures and I'll send videos so you can see, but I know for a fact that this was caused by the tape. She just said, why didn't you say you were going to rush back when I called you? You made it seem like you weren't coming anytime soon and you weren't that close. Girl, I tried and I'm over it. LOL, OMG. So I said, you told me to call back when I come back. I didn't make it seem like anything. I just said I was out of town. That didn't mean far away. I was only 45 minutes away and I rushed back because I was already going to come back home today. The tape is the issue and it's clear in the pictures that it is. At this point, you could say that you tried, but you have not compensated me or taken responsibility for what has happened. I can show you as soon as I get in and I will send videos and pictures and I sent her this video. So this is the tape right here that was used and it's not sticking at all. Here is my lace. It should be up farther, um, but even if it is, you can still see this underneath. This was not really tweezed or anything. I laid this down earlier today so I can kind of have like baby hairs to cover, but as you can see, you can even see it back here and I definitely didn't touch here and it still goes to this side. This was all put down by this gel that I used um, and you could just see the tape underneath. It's not good, so. Now can someone tell me, is there a lack of hospitality? Is there a lack of professionalism? Do people not understand that when you have a name, a brand, a product, an establishment, whatever it may be, and you're trying to build it and you're trying to acquire customers and clients, that there could only be one thing that helps you the best. And that thing is word of mouth. Word of mouth is the cheapest way to advertise your product, your brand, whatever, and it's the most effective way. So if I sit here and I tell you guys, hey, her shop is located at 2101 Door Street, Toledo, Ohio, 43607, and it's called the Pink Tuscadero. Y'all hear that name eventually. Are you guys going to go there after my experience? No, because my word of mouth told you guys, hey, as a client and as a customer, someone who's paying for a service, my service and my needs were not met, do not go there. Like, people have to understand that the cheapest way and the most efficient way to advertise yourself is word of mouth and people spreading it around. That way you don't have to pay for sponsorships, you don't have to pay for brand ambassadors, you don't have to pay for advertisement. Word of mouth is the fastest way. So what made her feel that it was okay for her to say, hey, I tried? You didn't try anything. I mean, you tried it. Trying to make me walk around looking like a nasty ass with that nut ass frontal on my head. You tried me there, but you didn't try to help me alleviate my situation at all. As someone who practices good business tactics and professionalism, there should be more than one option. You should always know that your customer is always right. So for her to keep telling me and arguing with me via text like I'm wrong, and on top of that, I'm not going to say I'm a kid. I'm not going to use the whole world. I'm just a kid. But at the same time, I'm a college student. You should have some sort of sympathy. So after I sent her this video, I did not get any reply. To this day, I have not gotten a reply from her. 
um, nothing. I guess she still posts on Facebook as if she's the best hairdresser alive. I've learned my lesson. I shouldn't have even paid for the service. But at the same time, you have to understand, when I was sitting right then and there, it was fine. It was something I could work with. But for me to come home, not even touch it, not do anything, and for it to be all the way back in 1992, like I said, and I wasn't even born in that year, nor was I even thought of, that's just not okay. And it really was a horror story. Like, it really, really made me upset because I spent the money. I budgeted for it. It was last minute. You know, I had already went through two, three other people to try to get my hair done. When all I really could have done was have somebody braid up my hair for $10 and throw on one of the thousands of wigs that I have laying around in my bathroom. So it was just really, really a slap in the face. And this is why I haven't gone to a hairdresser in years. The last time I went to a hairdresser to get my hair done was in the ninth grade on November 30th, 2000. I think that was 11 or 12 something like that 2011 that was the last time I went to a hairdresser which was five years ago and this is the reason why I do not trust a lot of people with my hair this is the reason why I get on YouTube and I learn how to do certain stuff all you need to do is braid my hair for me I will sew it I will tack it bobby pin it whatever it needs to be done because I just don't trust that many other people with my hair and this is the reason why I'm not saying don't go out there because I know some people have some diehard hairdressers that will slay your stuff but I have not met that person yet and I really hope that I do. Whether you're in Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, Toledo, Akron, somewhere in Ohio, even Michigan, if you're in Southfield, if you're in Westland, if you're in uh, Leno Lenovia, Livonia, Livonia, let me know because that's not far from where I'm at. I just need my hair to be done frontals, closures, whatever it may be. I guess the moral of the story is if you're someone who has a brand, a product, some sort of thing where you have to do with other clients and people, be professional and always know that the customer is right and you have to try and fix and solve the problem and the situations in order to get the best benefit out of your work. That's all I have to say. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below of your favorite part of the story time. Add me on Snapchat as usual because you know I'll be telling stories on Snapchat. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Shouting at me on the late night. Got a man, got me thinking, Shawty ain't right. She say she ain't about the creep life, but all she wanna do is take pipe. I ain't mad at nobody. I just wanna have your body.